Oh, oh I've left the mic in my bag. Oh. I've come here for a recce for early tomorrow morning. And this is it. So, I've come to this reservoir this afternoon, just biked over here from home, and uh, I've not done this one before, but I've seen it from a distance, but I haven't actually explored it at all. But that's what I intend to do tomorrow morning, but I'm coming over principally to try and shoot some wildlife, bird life that is, <laughs> with my Tamron 500mm SP lens, which is all manual, manual focus, obviously. Well, it may not seem obvious to you, but it is. Over amongst those trees is a bird hide, and that's where I'll be heading tomorrow morning. And the weather looks good too. Good morning. Right, I'm here by the reservoir. I came here yesterday, as you will have seen, for a recce. And uh, as you can see behind me, there's an absolute abundance of wildlife. I think they're all asleep at the moment, actually. But what I've also come here, really, is to photograph the wildlife, the bird life, particularly. And I've brought a Tamron SP500 mirror lens, catadioptric, this is the second iteration of this lens. Well, this is the second lens I've owned. <laughs> I once owned this way back in the 19, or was it the 18? Uh, no, probably 1980s. Yeah, and I used it on film cameras then. Canon, Nikon SLRs. Uh, the appropriate mount, because you had the adapter mounts. But anyway, then I moved to digital and I used it on my early digital cameras. Then I bought a, what was known as a Bigma, a Sigma, 50 to 500 mil lens, which was fantastic because that autofocus and everything, and of course a 10 to one zoom range on that particular lens anyway. But this one is purely manual and a fixed focal 500, but of course on my Fuji X-T3 or X-T20 that I use, uh, with the uh, Fuji mount uh, made by Kef, uh, on this Fuji mount, the lens is an effective 750 mil. Now we've got a sunrise coming up in a moment, and we've got mist over there in the distance. Uh, yeah, I can just see the sun peeking up now. So yeah, it's just peeping up over the horizon. We've got a, a waning moon there. At the moment, no wildlife, except me. <laughs> They're all asleep at the moment, but anyway. But we'll see how this goes. Now, this is no good at all for capturing action, really, and pulling focus. I mean, the focus on here is very accurate, but it has to be so precise. And all I can say is thank goodness for focus peaking on these mirrorless cameras. Um, or, and I've got it set to red, high red. And you can critically focus on that because back in the old days, um, manual focusing was a very hit and miss affair with this lens. Just a slight fraction of a millimeter would throw it completely out of focus. So there's absolutely no depth of field whatsoever. The Tamron was one of the very best mirror lenses produced. It's sharp, if you know the focus, of course, and contrast, though, is quite low. That aside, it's very light and compact for a telephoto, so no tripod collar is required. The focusing ring is super smooth, which is just as well. The characteristic visible donut rings depends on your subject, principally backlighting and shiny highlights is what causes that effect. It's either distracting or aesthetic. Depends on your opinion, but whatever, it's certainly retro bokeh. I paid only £82.50 on eBay last year, and it was in mint condition with 82mm filter on the front, which I've left on, strangely. So an absolute bargain. The ideal long telephoto lens for me would be Fuji's 100-400 zoom, which is a 150-600mm equivalent, but that's around twelve to £1,400. But of course, there's no comparison, given its quality and versatility. You pays your money and takes your choice. Anyway, that's enough rapping on about that. Let's get a shot of the uh, sunrise. Yeah.
Okay, so over behind me is a bird hide. I'm gonna head right over here now. Uh, if you can see me, I'm not in silhouette. <laughs> It's all a bit quiet on the bird life front just at the moment, but who knows? Okay, let's go. Right, anyway, so there's, so there's the Tamron SP500. So yes, all fully manual, manual exposure obviously, and manual focus, and thank goodness for the focus peaking. Makes a massive difference. Wow, this is fantastic. I'm actually doing more filming than I am shooting stills, but there's uh, gulls out there that are splashing around in the water, so I'm getting some lovely backlit shots. One of the benefits of shooting into the sun of course apart from that yeah i'm actually shooting more movie than i am stills i'm going to switch to slow motion now to get the spray in slow-mo uh but yeah that's yeah, all coming to life now <laughs> good stuff yes i would love to have fuji's 100 to 400 mil lens and maybe i'll get it one day but mrs h says no <laughs> she says no <laughs> Yeah, it's a very expensive lens, but it would be fantastic for capturing wildlife. But I'm not a wildlife photographer, so really, um, how often would I use it? I don't know. But this actually is slightly longer in focal length, but it is difficult to get the shots, to actually nail them in sharp focus. As I say, focus is so critical, but the red highlighting I've got on the focus peaking is helping enormously. Wow, just got one coming to land. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is better than I was uh, expecting, but, well, I wasn't really expecting very much anyway. <laughs> I've got a, like a 180 degree view here. Apart from three distant swans, no herons as yet. No great egret. <laughs> That'd be nice. Like I saw last week, which I'll be showing in a forthcoming video on my exploration of the Wendover arm of the uh, canal. There's a bit of mist over there still. I might just try a quick, uh, long telephoto shot. But of course, you see, there's no zoom in on this. It's fixed, of course. And uh, in fact, if you could zoom on that, it'd be rather strange. Yeah, <laughs> strange indeed. But uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, fantastic. Got this little spit out there. I mean, it's just like an Attenborough movie, this really. <laughs> when I look out there, there are hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of ducks and gulls. And couldn't tell you the species, but just over on the board here, there's a complete list of uh, birds you can expect to see here. Yeah. I noticed a spider's web and decided to shoot with a minimum focus of 1.7 metres away from the subject, who, bored with modelling for me, decides to head off. So it's not a bad macro lens either. Yes, yeah, so focusing with this lens is literally a 360 degree turn. It, uh, it's a long way from uh, close up, which is around about 2 metres from the focal plane to infinity. And, uh, but as I say, the very slightest of adjustments wow goes completely in or out of focus so once again that's where focus peaking is an absolute boom so let's see what we've got here that's pretty much what the camera's picking up at the moment there's a characteristic of the uh, mirror lens the donut rings i'm convinced that vlogging Whilst you're in an environment like this, you miss most shots. 
there was a bit of activity, a bit of argy-bargy going on over there with the birds. But anyway, I've photographed these now a few times and uh, just a mixture of gulls and, and uh, ducks of various types, um, as it says on the board there, but as I say, I'm not very knowledgeable on, on those birds. <laughs> But I think I'll go over and walk all the way around the reservoir and go over to where the swans are and we'll try and get some shots there because I'll be able to get in really, really close. However, the light will be uh, yeah, not as interesting maybe as the backlighting I'm getting here. But uh, yeah, if only a heron had just popped up over there, eh? Oh, God, it's beautiful out here. Tranquility. I don't think I'm going to come back with very many stills because I'm shooting so much movie. It's great fun capturing the action. Uh, so I'm shooting in 4K, 50 frames per second on the XT3, uh, and also 100 frames per second. Uh, 100 frames per second in slow motion, <laughs> yeah, roughly. <laughs> uh, but every time, of course, I turn on for slow mo, there's, they don't, they're not moving. But you have to keep shooting. You have to shoot a hell of a lot of material as any wildlife filmmaker would know. Uh, but that's not me. <laughs> Mind you, I've done quite a bit of wildlife you know, photography and filming in Portugal, particularly on the Obdosh Lagoon with the flamingos. Got some nice shots of those over the years. And the odd heron too. Um, but uh, there's no flamingos here. <laughs> Be a bit strange, I suppose, if it were. But this is a nature reserve and, um, yeah. But I haven't seen much, uh, that much, in, of the big guys yet, other than swans. But I'd love to see a great egret again. Wow. That'd be awesome, it would. Okay, I'm going to change locations in a moment, uh, so we'll leave the hide because way over in the distance that way I can see a whole bunch of swans, they're a bit bigger to photograph. <laughs> and uh, if I could catch them flying that is fantastic, yeah, swans in flight, brilliant. Oh wow, I missed that. I wish I had the XF 100-400mm Fuji lens, that zoom lens which would be equivalent to like 200 to 600 millimeter focal length. It would be awesome. Auto focus, focus tracking. Ah, here I have to manually focus. And of course, as I do, it's shaking the tripod a little bit, it's shaking the camera a little bit. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. It makes, makes life very difficult uh, if you want to follow any of the action, but for static subjects and everything like that, it's fine, yeah. I know. Yeah, stop, stop making excuses, you know, I must keep shooting, I'll get something. Okay, over to the swans. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of action going on here. <laughs> but I'm moving, I'm going. Right, change locations. Let's go. The 
sun's well up now, it's nearly 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, I was here at uh, just after 5. Sunrise though, needed some cloud, it needed that uh, mackerel sky if you like. It uh, fans out and uh, the sun has all the orange and red colours. Can't complain, it could have been ditched dull, but I would have seen the weather forecast and if it had been ditched dull, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Period. So I'm getting some shots of these swans. There must be whoa, 20 or so out there. Fantastic. And uh, well, the light is extremely contrasting now, but um, yeah, there's some interesting pictures here. It's a bit difficult. <laughs> Just a bit difficult focusing, really. Uh, I think they're sharp. We'll see. <laughs> it's amazing, man. Look at them. Wow. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna head off in a few minutes. Get back for breakfast, usual thing. But uh, there's a whole gaggle of swans here. I'm gonna switch now to the 1680. Yes, Fuji's 1680 lens. Because with the 500 mil, I can't show the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's at least 18, 20 swans right in front of me here. Okay, so I'm filming on the X-T3 now with the 1680 lens. GoPro's playing up a bit keeps freezing yeah a bit of a perennial problem with GoPros I think but anyway uh, <laughs> hope you enjoy what you see folks and um, well I hope I've got some half decent shots to show you and uh, see you next time don't forget please subscribe if you like <laughs> and bash the bell cheers for now